Hi guys, this is PyroJM and uh, thank you very much for tuning in to the firework information video. Um, thank you for your patience, I, uh, I said that I would do this a year ago and I didn't so I apologise for that. Um, but uh, finally, better late than never. Um, okay, so what is this video going to be talking about? Let's, uh, let's have a look. The first thing we're going to talk about is 1.3G and 1.4G, what does that mean? So if you see here, um, these numbers here on the boxes so we're going to have a look at them and then we are also going to uh, have a look at the different types of fireworks so you see here um, I, obviously I haven't got every type of firework but this will give you a rough idea um, as to what is available on the market we're also going to look at how to know if you're getting a good deal with fireworks um, and there are a couple of really good rule of thumbs that um, I would I would stick by um, and that will give you a good indication whether you know, you're paying the correct price for a firework. And then we'll look a little bit at safety, we'll look at firing, and if we've got time we'll look a little bit at uh, between the difference between UK fireworks and American fireworks. Okay, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Um, right, so this is a question I get asked a lot. What does that number signify? As a consumer, when you buy fireworks, you'll usually get two numbers on the side of the boxes, okay? Or one of two, should I say, I'm sorry. 1.4G or 1.3G. Now let's look at the actual basic meaning of those numbers. What they are is a hazard classification. For the companies that ship these fireworks around the world from China, because most fireworks are still made in China, they need to know how explosive the fireworks are that they're shipping. The lower the second number, the more explosive that particular shipment is. For example, 1.1G is the most explosive. Okay, now obviously in terms of fireworks, that's nothing to do with us. We look at 1.4G and 1.3G and, and that's it. We don't look at anything else. Okay, now in terms of what does it actually signify in terms of the components? Now, what I've done is just a little diagram. Um, I've done a little diagram here or a little page information page and uh, as you can see here there are two main explosive contents of a firework you have black powder and flash powder now every almost every firework will have a combination of the two up to a point uh, now black powder is your good old-fashioned gunpowder okay and flash powder is a more explosive type of gunpowder all right now just quickly another reason why I wanted to do this video and wanted to talk about this was because Epic Fireworks, I'm sure many of you will have heard of that brand, it is one of the biggest brands of fireworks in the UK. They make some amazing fireworks. Um, if you go onto their page and you click on, uh, just on the home page, there will be, a, it'll say top 10 reasons to buy from us and you click on that link and one of the top reasons it says is that most of the fireworks or almost every firework we sell is 1.3G. And then if you click on that link, it'll then give more details on it. And they go over it briefly. They don't really go into it into, you know, amazing detail. Um, but they give a simple equation of, you know, 1.3G is amazing and 1.4G is rubbish. And I've got to be honest, I'm disappointed. Uh, I've shopped several times with Epic Fireworks before. They're a fantastic, um, fantastic retailer. Um, I haven't shopped with them as much as I've shopped with Galactic, but they are still a very good brand. But I was very disappointed um, by what they said um, because it's, that's just wrong. And it, um, it really, um, to someone who doesn't know much about fireworks, it, it actually doesn't point them in the right way. It gives them a, a, a bit of a wrong idea because let me tell you that getting a, a license to, not only to stock but to be able to sell 1.3G fireworks in the UK is extremely hard. And Epic is one of the very few places that can do that. And what they're essentially saying is they're the best and everywhere else is crap. And I don't think that's very fair. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to just break that down so that people have a better understanding of the of the numbers. Now, if your firework has 1.4G on the side of it, that means that that firework has up to 5% flash powder and the rest of it is black powder. 1.3G has up to either 20 or 25% flash powder and the rest of it is black powder. 
Now there is an exception and that is pyromeshing. Because ultimately, firework companies want to ship as many fireworks, as many of their products as they can in one container just to reduce the costs, okay? Now one of the ways that they've done that is pyromeshing. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I haven't got a pyromesh firework. This is an old pyromesh that I kept from last year. But let's say a firework it would obviously be encased in a, in a big brown box just like the rest of those but then it, when you open up the brown box you'll see that the firework is actually caged up okay now what does that mean pyromeshing sorry for the terrible diagram um, it would mean that that firework is um, is graded as 1.4 G but because it's pyromeshed it actually has more than 5% flash powder because if it didn't have pyromesh it would be 1.3 G okay now, I'm sure that you're probably wondering, okay, that's, that's all great and, you know, but how does it actually affect the product? Well, this is how it affects it, okay? Now, when we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare a 5% flash powder to a 20% flash powder, okay? Now, will it be louder? Yes, but that's, again, is depending on the percentage. If you're comparing an 8% flash powder to a 5%, no difference, even a 12%, to a 5%, there won't be that much difference. What about in terms of the colors? No, the quality of the colors has nothing to do with the, the 1.3G or the 1.4G grading. What about the quality of effects in terms of, let's say, spinners or flying fish or quasets or, or crackles? Um, no, no difference at all. What about the width of the brakes? Again, yes, there will be a very slight difference, but that's only if you're talking you know, 20% compared to a 5%. I should state that it's extremely rare, and this is no matter what a retailer will tell you, because ultimately retailers are there to sell you fireworks, and that's it, okay? As long as you walk away with their product, most of the time they don't actually care that much. So, it is very rare, no matter what a retailer will tell you, that they ever put maximum 20 or 25% powder in a firework, because A, it's not economical to the company, that are manufacturing these because it is more expensive um, and actually you won't see that much difference so all these firework retailers that say you are oh, all our fireworks are maximum powder that's just not right but a lot of the time we take it we take what they say and we accept it um, so in conclusion what I would say is very simply guys just try the firework these modern day companies, you look at uh, Brothers Pyrotechnics, you look at Black Cat, you look at um, Taipan, Absolute Fireworks, Bright Star, um, Galactic, Epic. They're all very, very good brands and each of them know exactly what they're doing in terms of manufacturing. All of this stuff here, if you buy it from a good retailer, you know, a lot of the stuff they sell is, is just not crap. All of it's good. So don't be taken in by that whole 1.4G, 1.3G, because modern fireworks are so good that actually there isn't that much difference. Um, you know, all I say is just try the firework. I mean, liquid gold, that's a 1.4G firework, and it's amazing. The candy flies, amazing. You know, all of these are very, very good fireworks. So ultimately, that whole 1.3G, 1.4G, it doesn't make that much difference. And from next year, with the new C legislations coming in, um, the changes that are coming in for next year, all fireworks have to be limited to a maximum of a thousand grams of powder. Okay, so even all the epic firework stuff, that'll have to be all cut back, and that'll actually put everything, um, you know, over the years, yes, a few years ago, there was a big difference between 1.3G and 1.4G, but nowadays, no. The only type of firework that I would say make sure is 1.3G is rockets because 1.4G rockets are crap. 1.3G rockets, they will, they're amazing. But the rest of the stuff, don't worry about it, okay? And I, just to make it clear, I'm not here to have a go at Epic. I am not in any way trying to bring their image down. They are a fantastic firework retailer. They are one of the best along with Galactic. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that people don't get taken in because retailers have a way of just twisting things in their favor which at the end of the day who blames them you know no one can blame them that's exactly what what they should do because they want more business um, okay 
next thing we're going to talk about is a very good rule of thumb to know um, about how to get know if you're getting ripped off with fireworks or you know how to know you're getting a good deal okay now um, you'll see many retailers that will that will do this what they'll do is they'll take a firework and they'll say retails at 199.99 but we're selling it for half price and the reason we do this is because we buy everything in bulk um, okay so that is the statement is correct up to a point um, but what they're actually doing is they're selling the firework for what it's really worth retail prices almost mean nothing they don't mean a thing and the reason that is is because if they're manufacturing their own stuff they can set their own retail prices it's as simple as that so when you look at you know people like epic um, their own brand of stuff and the only reason I'm picking epic is because most of the stuff they have is their own brand they can put any price they want they can put any retail price they want on their fireworks and say that they cut it in half what they're actually doing is they're selling the firework for what it's worth they're not giving it to you at a, at a massive discount because essentially they're still there to, you know, to make business and, it, and they would never sell you something for less than what they think it's worth okay now what's a very good rule of thumb um, that I was taught and I think is a fantastic way of saying um, if you're getting a good deal is it is approximately 10 pounds sterling for 100 grams of powder so let's say you have a firework of 383 grams NEC that's net explosive content that's a 38 pound firework so let me just give you an example if we have a look here at the diamond princess okay so if we have a look here there we are the NEC is 408 grams so this is a 40 pound firework if you pay anything under 40 pounds then you know you've got a good deal that that is actually how much that firework is worth um, so in terms of, and, and most fireworks will have this, um, some of the older ones, this is quite an old blue blitz. I'm not sure if it will have it. Um, it should be actually, but uh, no, this one doesn't have it. But most of the modern ones, uh, almost every modern firework, they um, they have to have the, the amount of powder that's that's on it. Um, like for example, this is, this is new this year. Um, this should have it. Yeah, you can see there. 333 grams so this is a 33 pound firework that's that is how much um, that is how much you should be paying for it um, so that's a great way of, uh, of finding out very few firework retailers will put the weight of their fireworks on there um, I don't think epic do which I think is a bit of a shame because they they put some great information on their website but I would have thought the weight is the most important thing that that's essentially how you can tell whether the firework is worth the money um, and uh, Galactic actually, yes, Galactic do put the weight of the firework. As a matter of fact, I think they put the, the, the actual explosive content on there, which is great. That's what you want. So you'll know straight away whether you're paying a decent price for a firework. Um, so that's the rule of thumb, which I've been taught. And I think that's one of the best ways. So let's say you have, you know, 500 pounds worth of fireworks. Um, you know, essentially, that would mean that you should have 50 kilos of fireworks. That is, um, or sorry, it's it's either 10 pounds per 100 grams or 10 pounds per kilo of the fireworks. So let's say you've got a, a liquid gold. Let's have a quick look at the liquid gold. So you can see here the liquid gold um, weighs six, six kilograms. So that is, a, you know, a 60 pound firework. Okay. So I hope that helps uh, in terms of knowing if you get ripped off or not. Um, if you've got any questions about that, please do feel free to ask. But um, yes, the weight of the firework will tell you whether the firework is worth the money. And retail prices, don't even look at them because they don't mean anything. Retail prices mean absolutely nothing um, because most of the time they can set anything they want. Um, right. So sorry if that sounds all, you know, conflicting and sounding like I want to start arguments that's absolutely not the case I'm just trying to help people out here that that's all um, you know this is just knowledge that I've been passed down over the years and um, I get a lot of questions about them so hence why I wanted to do this video um, so now let's go ahead and have a look at all the different types of fireworks that are out there so first up we have rockets now rockets are 
if you're on a tight budget, they are one of the most expensive uh, bits of kit. So what I would do is I would always recommend that if your budget is tight, try not to go for too many rockets because they end up actually being quite, um, they, they actually end up taking quite a big chunk of the, uh, because obviously they don't last that long as well. Um, but rockets obviously are a very popular type of firework. Then we have sparklers. Now sparklers are responsible for up to 80% of um, firework accidents, okay? So just make sure these burn at extremely high temperatures. So just make sure guys that if you're giving them to the kids, make sure that they're wearing gloves and make sure that there's a bucket of water handy so that you can go ahead and put them in the water as soon as they're done because they stay hot for a while afterwards, okay? Fountains. Obviously fountains are strictly a ground firework um, and as you can see they come in many different shapes and sizes. These two on the end are more novelty fireworks um, but fountains um, create lots of different effects. They create crackling, they, um, they create whistles, uh, create all sorts of different coloured flames and um, they are always normally a very nice addition to a back garden display. Some last only a short period of time, maybe 15, 20 seconds. Others might last up to two minutes. So lots of variety out there. Um, most fountains, sorry, in terms of firing these, by the way, obviously rockets, you have a tube um, and that's what you would use. Unless you have a, you have a rack as well, that's another way of, uh, of setting off fireworks. Uh, setting off rockets, sorry. Um, fountains, most of the time, I just put put them on a hard surface. So put them on a driveway or, um, you know, put a bit of cardboard down or something like that. Or, you know, if you want to put them in a bucket of sand, that's another way. Um, just make sure that they don't fall over. That's, that's the important thing. Um, now, bangers are illegal here in the UK now, uh, but this is kind of the next best thing. Uh, celebration crackers, which are rolls of firecrackers. Um, you set these up, um, you, as you can see, yeah, you set these up on a, on a post and, uh, you know, they are great fun. They are, um, they're great fun. Um, that's the only one I think that Galactic sell, or if you buy the Platinum box, you get the Crackling Snake, which is another way. Um, another, another type of, uh, crackle, but they all basically do the same thing. You've then got uh, Catherine wheels, again, very popular. Um, again, loads of different shapes and sizes. They create different colored flames. They whistle. Um, that gives you an idea of the different shapes that are, that are there. Um, just pin them to a post or to a wall. Um, just the important thing is that they're secure because obviously they spin at high velocity and they can come off easily. So just make sure that they are really attached well to, to the post and that they can spin freely. So. Just make sure that you get the balance right, and um, and they're obviously great fun. Um, mines. Now, this is a mine combination. Um, there are two types of mine. You've got mine combinations, and you have uh, mortar mines. These are uh, mine combinations. So what they do is they start off with a fountain, and then they explode from the ground up. Okay, so it's not a projectile which gets ejected and then blows up in the sky. It actually the whole inside of the mine explodes, which makes these one of the more dangerous types of fireworks, particularly if you're if they're not well um, secured. Most people that I know either use a stake or actually bury these halfway. Um, so just make sure that you you know you just you follow the advice. Most of the time there will be loads of advice on the back to tell you exactly what to do. Um, so just make sure you follow the guidelines. Mortar mines don't have a fountain, so they just explode straight away. Once the fuse gets to the explosive part, they they go off straight away. Um, so just be aware. I always say just check out the firework on YouTube, type it in on YouTube, and most of the time the, the firework will be there. Um, Roman candles. Now, Roman candles are slightly different. Um, if you look at all of these, um, let, let's say, for example... Uh, sorry, let's get rid of that. Uh, let's say one of these. Now this is a 49 shot firework. Each tube has one shot. Now this is a 30 shot Roman candle, but it doesn't have 30 tubes. What a Roman candle is, is it's all the shots are stacked one on top of the other. So there'll be maybe about four, four or five tubes in there. 
and each tube will have shots stacked up. Okay, so that's the basic difference between a Roman candle and a cake. Um, obviously, they normally always have this elongated shape and they fall over very easily if you don't secure them. So bury them in the ground or go ahead and use a stake. You pop a stake down and then gaffer tape it around the stake. And that, that usually does it, you know, quite, uh, does the job nicely. Missile cakes, um, very popular, especially in um, box selections. You'll normally always get one of these. This is a, a bigger slightly more professional version but if you take off that lid there'll be loads of little pen tops little black plastic things which you could almost take out actually um, but obviously don't take them out because they're essential to the firing mechanism um, but uh, yeah and these fly off all over the place screeching into the sky a big a big fan favorite uh, a lot of people like that um, and then we go into cakes a huge variety of cakes but these are just these are vertical firing cakes now these shots here they just go straight up okay now some of them might shoot slowly they'll have different firing patterns some will shoot quickly most fireworks nowadays tend to have a quickened finale so the last few shots of the cake will be shot quite quickly just to give that real oomph that real ooh ah finale um, but you can see they come in different in different shapes and each tube as I said like this is a 16 shot cake so it has 16 tubes each tube has one shot okay same with uh, same with the 49ers and, and all that then you have fan fireworks now fan fireworks are a little bit different what they do is as you can see here the tubes on the outside are all slightly angled and in the center they're straight and on the right they're angled to the right that gives a lot more dimension to the firework in the sky and uh, that's something that we've really started to see a lot more of um, in recent years but fan fireworks um, are a fantastic addition because it, it to people to a layman to somebody that doesn't know about fireworks it looks like it's loads of different fireworks going off at the same time so you know fan fireworks are great and as you can see again they come in different shapes and sizes uh, these are slightly more unusual and they're a little bit rarer to find. Uh, this is a V-shaped cake. So this cake here, if you feel where the tubes are, you'll feel that this cake just shoots to the left and to the right. It doesn't shoot straight up, okay? A little bit unusual. You don't see many on the market, but I just thought I'd point that out. Um, and then you've got obviously combinations. Um, you've got the Rattlesnake and the Battle of Midway as an example. So these actually shoot straight up and they later on also have fan effects. So nice combinations. Um, okay, and yes, safety. Okay, so that's roughly all the different types of fireworks. Apologies if I've missed anything out. If you've got any questions about your particular firework, go ahead and pop a comment and I will, I will have a look and do my best to help. Um, okay, so in terms of safety, these are essential, okay? I say it time and time again, you know, it's easy to look at fireworks and think how safe they are because, to be fair, they are. Fireworks nowadays are extremely safe and if you secure them properly, very little can go wrong. But always wear these. This is just a minimum, guys, you know. You've only got one set of eyes and it's so easy for, any, for anything to... Um, oops, knocking over the Roman candle. It's so easy for one spark to fly, especially if you're in a tight working space and you're setting off some of these bigger fireworks, you know, it's always good to, to be careful. So I always have these. Um, I also, you know, I've got sensitive ears, so I protect my ears, and I also protect my hands with welding gloves. And uh, sometimes if I'm setting off rockets, I'll even have hard hats as well. A um, little bit over the top, but I just like to be, like to be safe. Um, I need all my limbs intact for my career, so, <laughs> so that's why it's kind of important for me. Um, Next up, we've got firing. Um, now, most box sets, if you buy a box set of fireworks, um, you will get one of these, sorry, yeah, one of those little light, um, one of those little tapered uh, things. And they burn for a while, um, but they're, they're not that great. You normally have to stick them on a fuse for a while before anything happens, and in the end, it just gets a bit frustrating. What I would do is I would invest into some port fires. Um, they normally come in, it's normally like pound 50 for a pack of five of these. These last not as long as, the, uh, as those ones that I just showed you there, but these last maybe 
three minutes, anything between three and five minutes, and that actually produces a, a flare, um, and it, it will light instantaneously. You put that straight on the fuse, and it will light. If your budget allows it, and you're a real pyromaniac, I would thoroughly recommend going for one of these. This is called a Rothenberger Surefire 2. It has a safety system, and um, it, it's a, it runs on propane, and uh, it's you know instant click on click off and uh, it's expensive but it's worth the money that's one of the best ways of lighting fireworks and actually over time it will save you money um, because they just they last they last forever uh, all you gotta do is replace the propane um, okay well I think that oh uh, American fireworks in UK now there is a reason why I had this blue blitz if you have a look here at the bottom you'll see it, was, it says brothers heavyweights up to 500 grams of powder now this firework was meant for the american market and that's the giveaway in america cakes are you know when you look at all these shopping videos in america um all of them look very impressive they, they go to these supermarkets and they have these huge cakes but if you were to rip off the lid so if I was to rip off this lid here, you would see there'd be loads of tubes. There'd be actually, eight, this is 80 shots, so there'll be 80 tubes there. Now, in America, they have big ones, but if you rip off the top, there'll only be like nine shots, for example. And in terms of the 500 grams, that's the maximum amount of powder that they can have. So 500 grams is the maximum powder that they're allowed in America. Us in the UK, we're allowed up to, um, I think it's 1,200 grams we're allowed. So, and next year will be limited to a thousand, but still that's essentially our fireworks were allowed double the amount of powder that they are. Um, the only thing that's, in my view, that's better in America is the fact that you can buy novelties. So you can have like tanks, you can have spinners that go up in the air, parachute cakes. We're allowed parachute cakes, but it's very difficult to find them. Um, and obviously they're allowed shells. We are not allowed shells here. You have to uh, be a certified professional to let off shells. Um, but yes, so in terms of, you know, between American and UK fireworks, UK fireworks are more powerful. Um, and American fireworks, they have slightly more variety in terms of, uh, in terms of actual stock um, and in terms of uh, novelties. Um, but overall, I would certainly say I'd much rather have bigger powerful fireworks like these because although they don't look that big um, the packaging is nowhere near as big as the ones that they are in in the States these will pack a much bigger punch than anything that they produce in the, in, in America um, okay so there we go um, I hope that has been uh, helpful to you um, if you have any questions at all about you know the stuff that I've spoken about in this video or, or even anything else um, please do feel free to ask me. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe, and uh, I will actually. Um, I couldn't couldn't stop myself. I've actually got another load of fireworks being delivered this week. Um, just uh, only another, I think five five or six fireworks that are coming in, but some really cool additions. Um, so I will do a video on them, and um, yeah, hope you can tune in for that one. So thank you very much, and uh, wishing everyone a. Um, a very safe bonfire night.